Hi my loves, welcome back. Today I'm going to finally do my pregnancy Q&A for you all. Um, I asked these questions absolutely ages ago on Instagram and I did mean to film it in the preceding weeks. And then I got distracted doing loads of other things and I'm finally sitting down to do it. When in fact I am now considered full term or early term. So if baby girl arrived now, um, she would no longer be considered premature. So I am actually reaching the final stages of my pregnancy. I'm sure there will be a few changes over the next few weeks, but um, hopefully we've got a fairly clear picture of what most of my pregnancy has looked like. Like I said before, I'm sort of being selective about what information I share about pregnancy and the baby. I'm sure we'll get into that, maybe. <laughs> but um, I thought it would just be nice to just do a little Q&A and um, give you guys an overview of what it's been like to some extent. Obviously I didn't announce until I was well over halfway, so um, yes, there's a few things that you don't know maybe. I'm sat here drowning in Zach's jumper. There is a bump in there, I probably look like a pinhead, but I thought I'd just film from the sofa today and be comfy and have a little chat with you all. I also thought there's so many fantastic channels out there of women documenting their pregnancies properly. Um, and in such a way that I think is really helpful for anyone going through pregnancy, going through the early stages of um, child rearing, people's TTC journey, all of those things. I think there's so much wonderful content out there um, that I didn't really feel like you needed it from me as well. I'll list um, at least one channel down below which I found really, really helpful, but I might put a few more in as well. But anyway, that's my ramble done. <laughs> Let's get into some questions, shall we? So someone asked about my pregnancy exercise routine um, and said seven weeks and cannot move. Okay, so because of COVID, I guess this falls under, lots of you asked about what it's like being pregnant during a pandemic, which I will also answer. I was really into my fitness and going to the gym a lot before COVID. And then I really fell out of the habit. I didn't really end up picking up any proper routine, like at home routine um, before I got pregnant. And then I got pregnant and I had a pretty rough first trimester. Um, at least I think I would have done in terms of exercising. So I was just building the habit more and more of not exercising. So throughout my pregnancy, I have not done much exercise, comp especially compared to like what, what I was doing um, pre-COVID. Um, here and there, I've got into the habit of going for walks um, and I would have done that for a few weeks and then things get uncomfortable, things change. I do struggle with walks because of the weeing element. It is so annoying. Also during COVID, all the, all the toilets are pretty much closed unless it's a petrol station or something. You can't just stop for lunch or a coffee somewhere and go for a wee. So yes, walking is great. Um, and I have done a fair amount of walks over the part, over my pregnancy, but probably not as many as I should or could have. But yes, the weeing element I struggled with and just like anyone, motivation is low. Uh, I also have got into the habit here and there of doing Pilates or that sort of thing as well. But basically what I'm saying is my exercise has definitely fallen by the wayside. Over the past year of changes and things happening. I'm really, really looking forward to getting back into it. Um, it's definitely something I'm gonna try and prioritize. I have no idea how I'm gonna feel once baby is actually out, but um, I would love to prioritize exercise, not just for the kind of bodily effects, although I do feel really weak compared to how strong I was, like this time last year, for instance. And I would like to get some muscle tone back and that sort of thing. But also just for my mind, I just think it's so beneficial. And it also gives me a sense of routine. There's all sorts of things I love about exercise that I just haven't really got into. And I just never found a groove with home exercising. Some people are really good at it. I much prefer to be in classes, to be in the gym, to have someone looming over me, telling me what to do. I'm not so good at doing it at home, which is not ideal. We did, Zach and I did do some running over summer, but that stopped pretty much once I found out I was pregnant. So anyway, that's my long ramble. Basically, I wasn't doing much pre-pregnancy, nowhere near as much as I was doing. So when I got pregnant, that definitely didn't help matters. I'm looking forward to going back to the gym, and I'm hoping by the time I am 
six weeks or whenever I'm cleared for exercise postpartum, I'm hoping gyms might be open. One of my pieces of advice would be if you are at any stage of your pregnancy really struggling with exercise, I wouldn't force yourself to do it. Of course, I'm no doctor, so please consult your doctors and your midwives and whoever else. I really don't think it's worth pushing through um, if you feel nauseous or really uncomfortable or really heavy. Um, I don't think it's worth pushing through. Like I said, walking is really great because it's very low impact and um, it helps you get outside and whatever. We're all bored of walks, pregnant or not pregnant during the pandemic. But yes, I would say stay active to some degree, but don't worry about, about doing the sort of same level of activity because it is really tough on your body and I don't think I would have been able to maintain what I was doing this time last year. But we'll have to see, we'll have to wait and see my next pregnancy, hopefully. Next pregnancy, I can go to the gym and do all the things that I would usually be doing. Lots of you asked, have you enjoyed your pregnancy? I'm one of those people who is sort of indifferent to it. Well, let's start with enjoying it. So first trimester, I really didn't enjoy, didn't like it at all. As soon as I got past that really sicky, horrible early stage, I just felt hungover for like 16 weeks. <laughs> it was not very pleasant, like every day. I wasn't actually sick that much, but I just felt sicky and nauseous all the time. I would have to eat every two hours. It was just, I don't even like snacking. I'm not a big snacker by nature. But pregnancy, you have to get really good at snacking. In the early stages, to keep that nausea at bay, you'll know if it works for you, then you need to keep eating every two hours, basically. And in the third trimester, because you really can't eat much at once, because your stomach is all squished. So I much prefer eating like big meals um, and not snacking that much. I just find it a bit <laughs> tiresome, to be honest, to keep feeding myself. So I did find that switch quite difficult in the first trimester. Um, anyway, once I got past all of that, I did start to enjoy it more. You start to feel the baby move, which is so precious. Definitely one of the best things about it. In fact, the best thing about it. And yes, as I'm nearing the end, now I'm getting more uncomfortable again and not enjoying it, which I think is that's a fairly typical um, reaction throughout pregnancy. Some people absolutely love it, regardless of whether they feel sick or not. Some people obviously have a really tough time the whole way through. But anyway, in conclusion, <laughs> I'm so rambly today, aren't I? Um, have I enjoyed my pregnancy? Yes and no, but it hasn't felt... I think you sort of get used to it quite quickly and then you just are pregnant. It's going to be weird, I think, being not pregnant again and just being me. Um, well, I'll be a new mum, which is so exciting. But... Just having my body to myself again, I think would be very weird. I, I'm somewhere in between on the whole thing. It depends on what day you ask me as well and what time in the day you ask me. Lots of you asked me, have we got a name yet? We do have a name. I will probably share it. I haven't fully, fully decided if I will share it. I think I probably will share it just because um, it is a little bit easier. <laughs> Even though I don't think she'll be a huge part of the vlogs or anything, it'll be easier to refer to her by her actual name and all of that sort of thing without um, confusing myself and making life complicated. But I don't know whether we'll release her like full name, if you know what I mean. But yes, we do have a name. Lots of you asked me if I was gonna do the names we won't use video. Honestly, choosing a name, I found to be really, really difficult. I suddenly basically hated all names. <laughs> um, I, yeah. We did have a short list, but it's a short list I don't particularly like. I don't know. It was so, so difficult. I'm still, I wouldn't say I was like 100% on the name we've chosen either, but I'm hoping she'll kind of grow to own it and then I will love it because it's attached to her. Um, but yeah, I just suddenly d disliked all names. So I don't think I could do that video because honestly, um, there aren't a lot of names that I that I decided I liked in the end. Highest and lowest pregnancy moments. I think the highest, like I said, it's got to be when you feel the baby move and you feel those moments of connection. It's so special. Yes, even when she's kicking me in the ribs or it feels like she's going to burst out of me, alien style. Um, it's very, it's a very special thing, I think. Lowest. I mean, there's a few. <laughs> there's a few. Um, I really was getting pretty fed up of feeling crappy in the first trimester. 
um, especially as we near the end. Because when you feel like nauseous in normal life, it's horrible and it might even last a few days if you're sick, if you're actually being sick or whatever. Um, but to have it go on for weeks and weeks and weeks can be very tiring. And I have been thinking about that actually in terms of like chronic illness and stuff. A lot of the things that pregnant women, you know, deal with and are really uncomfortable and unpleasant, other people deal with for years and years and years, maybe their whole lives. And it is so tiring. It really can be mentally taxing. So I really feel for people that are struggling with chronic illnesses because it's just not nice to feel like you're not comfortable in your body. Anyway, um, as I'm in these final weeks, I think just not being comfortable ever. Really miss lying on my back and on my front. Just simple, simple little things like that. Um, even sat here, I'm sort of worried that I'm too tipped back. I need to be sort of forward a little bit more. Um, and, and it's also not very comfortable. <laughs> Just to be comfortable would be nice. Um, and yeah, like I said, that's something that I think I take for granted in daily life. And that isn't um, true for everyone. Uh, and I'm just getting more and more tired. So someone asked, how have you adapted your fashion since your pregnancy? Has your style changed? So another one for me being pregnant in a pandemic question, really, because I was speaking to some other pregnant ladies the other day and we were all saying that we basically saved a lot of money on um, maternity wear especially um, work maternity wear, if you do go to work. Luckily, you know, I wouldn't have had to find maternity office wear or anything. And I know actually a big part of my job is outfit, is fashion. And I could have gone and spent money on clothes, you know, either um, bigger size, straight size clothes or maternity wear. And I might still have to buy bigger clothes postpartum because my body may have changed forever. And um, I'm ready to do that at the time. But it just felt like such a waste when we're not going outside and we're not really doing anything. So it would have just been for pictures, basically. And I just thought that seemed like a big waste. So I haven't really done that. So I have been sort of surviving on a very limited wardrobe. I do think getting yourself a couple good pairs of like maternity joggers and pyjamas and maybe leggings is a good move wearing oversized everything on the top half. It's not the most flattering maternity wear because you then just do look a bit voluminous. That's how I've been, that's how I've been rolling. I think if life had been normal, I would have bought more clothes. Still, I think it's a bit of a waste, um, especially because you grow so much that things sometimes only last like a month or two anyway. But we'll have to, again, I'll have to see in my next pregnancy how, how I sort of adapt style-wise and whether it's very different um, if I am actually going out socialising, going to meetings, doing normal life stuff. But yes, managed to get away with, with buying very little actually. So I wish I could have done more pregnancy style inspiration, but like I said, it did just feel like a bit of a waste to me, especially when babies are already so expensive. Um, yes, adding maternity wear into that is just quite expensive, an expensive process in general. Lots of people ask about my pregnancy cravings. I have had no specific cravings, no moment where I'm like, I must have X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. It's more about how my tastes, general tastes have changed. So in my early pregnancy, I really wanted spicy, tangy, sourish food. Couldn't stand sweet food. Something to do with the nausea maybe, although you would think Spicy food causes heartburn, which makes it all worse. But anyway, um, and then I sort of transitioned probably around the 20 week mark into a much more of a sweet tooth, much more of a sweet tooth than I normally have. Um, and more just sort of carby things. Yeah, like I said, nothing specific really. I have not sent Zach out at 3 a.m. to get anything particular. Someone asked, have people treated you differently the way people perceived your personality changed? Another one for a COVID pregnancy. I have really not seen anyone apart from my family, um, which has been quite odd because the last time I saw my friends, I was not pregnant. Um, and then the next time they'll see me, I will be like an actual mum. So it's very weird. It's weird not to have anyone really see you. I don't know if there's anything um, enlightening I can say about that, apart from the fact that it is just a bit weird. And it, it is obviously a little bit sad as well. You'd like people that you love to see you go through a transition um, and do it more gradually. So it's not like going from last time I saw you weren't a mum, now you are a mum. It's quite a bit 
it's quite a strange thing. And also, out and about, I've not had a lot of interactions with people. So I've not had any strangers touch my belly, which is good. We like that. Um, the only time, really, I went to the co-op the other day uh, in search of a loo. This lady took pity on me. Their loos were locked, basically, probably because of COVID. And she took pity on me. And she said, I saw you were expecting. Do you need the loo? And I was like, yes. And so she took me to the loo. So that's really the only time I can think of that someone out and about in the world has acknowledged my pregnancy, actually apart from our DPD driver as well, who was very nice about carrying things around. Um, it's odd to be sort of in a state of isolation, I suppose. How do you feel about juggling a baby and renovating house during the second COVID year? It's not ideal, it's not the order I would do things in in life if, you know, you'd <laughs> given me um, the option. But honestly, I'm just, I'm ready for a challenge. You know, um, Zach and I are still pretty young and we just take life as it comes and just go with the flow with things. Very excited for the baby, very excited for the house. Things will get done, things will happen and it will all be worth it in the end. Yeah, just trying to be chill about it all really. Will you be doing any videos on motherhood or product recommendations? Might do some product recommendations. Might do them more on my blog so I can be a bit more concise and a bit more helpful and a bit less rambly at some point. About motherhood, I don't know yet. Um, I know lots of people choose to kind of um, keep their baby off the vlogs and stuff, but still talk about their motherhood journey. Totally get that. Totally think it could be me, I could do that as well. At the same time, I feel like to some degree you still sort of share key parts of your relationship with your child through doing that. Um, so I don't know how I will feel about really talking about motherhood in great detail. But I'm just going to see. Like I've said before, I'm just going to follow my instincts with it all. It may be that she makes more of an appearance than I think, maybe even less. Um, or I talk about it more or less. Um, particularly over the last few weeks as we nearly end of pregnancy and stuff. It has been foremost in my mind and it probably will be for the first few months of her life as well. Um, whilst, especially because nothing much else is going on, like it's not like we're travelling or um, doing anything other than just waiting for this baby to arrive. So um, yes, there's not been a lot else to talk about, but hopefully as the house really gets going, as other things start happening, it won't be so much of a focus um, for me anyway, but yeah. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm going to go with the flow with it all. How do you cope with body changes and has your confidence remained the same? I found it hard in the beginning because I was almost immediately bloated. I get bloated quite often in general, but this felt more of a permanent sort of bloat. I basically felt I immediately didn't fit into all my jeans properly. Everything was a bit uncomfortable. Anyway, on that fashion question, I used a belly band or something. I can't remember what they're called. I'll link them down below for a long time to try and get as much use out of my sort of normal um, clothes for as long as possible. Basically you put it over your trousers and it holds them up whilst they're undone. You can also use the hair tie trick and all sorts of things, but anyway. I, all my, I, I sort of immediately felt bloated and just not very nice. And like I said, I had to eat every two hours pretty much. So I did put on some weight in the first trimester. Some people don't put any on. Some people lose weight because they're, you know, being sick all the time. I definitely think putting weight on is better than that option. Um, I would much rather that. So yes, I just felt like not really myself and a bit out of sorts. Um, combine that with the sort of nausea and all that sort of stuff. It wasn't very pleasant. I didn't feel very confident or very happy in myself. Um, but as I got past that, I could eat normally again. Um, and, you know, but the bump started to show a little bit. I, cer I certainly felt a lot better. And it's so gradual, or at least it was for me. Um, I think I've done the most growth and you do the most growth sort of from like 28 weeks to about 36 weeks and you suddenly, <laughs> at least for me, I just suddenly sort of grew a lot and I suddenly felt very pregnant. But really, it, in general for me at least, it has been quite a gradual process. I know some people do show a lot earlier, um, some people don't show much until the very end, but because it's been gradual I've been able to just kind of accept it as I go along. And I have also felt very beautiful because it's quite, um, it's quite, it's quite a sort of, 
I don't know, satisfying shape, a pregnant belly. And so, yes, I have enjoyed it, but first trimester I definitely just didn't feel right. Um, it didn't really fit in anything, was bloated, etc, etc. It wasn't very pleasant. In terms of am I worried about my body afterwards, um, I am. I think it, w it is kind of unusual not to be worried at all. I am worried or apprehensive, I suppose, is probably a bit of a better word just because you don't quite know what to expect. Everyone's bodies react differently. I would like to fit back in my jeans simply because I love my jeans. Um, I don't want to go out and buy a whole new selection of denim particularly. And I'm just so looking forward to wearing jeans, I can't even tell you. Not because they'll be comfortable, but just to feel like me again. I know that sounds really silly, doesn't it? Yes, so there's some things I'm worried about. My belly has been a bit more of an insecurity for me. Um, so, of course, it feels very beautiful now because we're all sort of bumpy um, and it's been nice to sort of get my belly out and um, show it off with pride. But yes, I am apprehensive about what I will look like after pregnancy and whether I will fit back into any of my clothes. You know, some people say their shoulders grow and they just get wider everywhere. So it's going to be a period of adjustment to my new body. No doubt it will be different in fundamental ways. Of course it will have given me my baby so I'm endlessly grateful to it and all of that. And yeah, and I simply don't really know yet what it will be like or how it will react. Um, and I know that it can also take a really long time. Like lots of the things that you think will be permanent really aren't permanent. Um, from what I have read, from what I've been told. It sometimes takes like a year, two years for things to really sort of return to a normal. So yes, I just have to be patient. I'm gonna try and remind myself to be patient with it all and not put too much pressure on myself. Have you felt any difference since announcing your pregnancy on social media? Um, not really, uh, because I think I waited a long time so that I would get used to the idea myself. So when I did announce, I felt kind of confident in it um, and in the whole idea of it, <laughs> which I think was a good thing to do. What were both of your family's initial reactions? Both were very, very excited. Have you always wanted children? Yeah, I would say I have always wanted children, wanted to be a mum. Lots of you asked about books I've been reading. To be honest, I haven't been reading a lot of books um, because I mostly feel like I've been picking up information from videos I've watched. Mostly just websites and just Googling things and um, obviously we did the PVC course, we've done the N NCT course. So we've done a couple of courses more than books. I feel like that's how I like to absorb this sort of reference information rather than through books. I don't know, when she's here, maybe I'll read more parenting books. A couple of things I did read, I did read Emily Oster's books, the Expecting Better book, which kind of debunks various pregnancy myths using economic techniques. Um, I thought that was good. It's not a perfect book, but it is sort of, it was sort of comforting in various ways. I also read her kind of childhood book. I found that yet less useful and also thought a lot of it was sort of beyond um, what I needed. I don't need to think about, you know, when they're two or three yet. I'm sort of focused on um, the newborn stage. Had to go for a quick wee and snack break there <laughs> for a minute. But we're back, we're back. Someone asked, what do you do slash eat daily to keep your body healthy during pregnancy? Honestly, I have not been paying much attention. Within reason, of course, you want to avoid the food you're supposed to avoid. And you don't want to um, gain weight at a really rapid pace. But honestly, I've just been eating what I want. Just sort of letting, like intuitive eating, I suppose, is what I've been doing. Um, sometimes I feel like unhealthy food. Sometimes I feel like healthy food. Um, sometimes, yeah, I want real freshness. Sometimes I just want processed carbs. <laughs> I've just been doing what I want. You should, of course, be consulting doctors and midwives about your diet if you're worried about it. But yes, there is a lot of pressure on women to eat super healthily or, you know, whatever in pregnancy. And I just think, and I just think it's mad. Like, you know, we're autonomous human beings and as long as you're staying safe, I don't see why you shouldn't sort of eat as you wish. Lots of questions about whether I'm nervous about giving birth or I feel good about it or, um, how to feel less anxious about birth and mentioned this in a few vlogs but I'll mention it again. We did the Positive Birth Company's hypnobirthing course and it was 
fantastic, it's made me feel a lot more chill. You do have to, you know, um, put parts of it into practice in daily life, like reading lots of um, positive birth stories, reprogramming your mind. I think hypnobirthing could be beneficial to lots of people. Whatever's happening, whether you're having a supernatural birth, whether you know you want an epidural, whether you're having a c-section, whatever the case is, I think hypnobirthing techniques can really help because, you know, it's a stress, it's quite a stressful thing or it could be a stressful thing um, and it's something that you're going to have some concern about. You want to come out of it healthy, with your baby healthy as well. But yes, I'm at a place, I've had a few wobbles probably now that I've got to the end of pregnancy and it's a bit more imminent, but those are mostly really not to do with birth itself, but more about the uncertainty of the whole thing, um, like when she'll arrive, because, you know, if I go into spontaneous labour, that feeling of when will it happen, and when it happens, you sort of have to switch into your hypnobirthing mode, at least I would quite like to um, immediately be able to switch into a relaxation mode. You know, it's a bit, it's a bit crazy that she could arrive any time really, and that I'll have to be able to make that transition into I was eating my lunch and now I'm birthing a baby <laughs> and it's happening today. Um, I think that's quite a crazy thing. Lots of life-changing events do happen overnight, do happen, you know, in seconds, um, but you're not generally anticipating that that overnight change will happen, if you know what I mean. Um, things will change overnight and I don't know exactly when, <laughs> unless of course I go well past my due date to be induced or end up having a cesarean or any of those things as well. Um, so there's kind of anxiety about spontaneous birth, about not spontaneous birth. Um, and I think that's fairly natural. I think even with hypnobirthing and all of that sort of thing, it's just a bit of an uncertainty thing, especially if you're a planner, if you like to know things in advance, that can feel very weird. So I've had a few, a few more wobbles recently, but in general about birth itself, I'm feeling good. Some people asking, Will Zach and I get married or get engaged? I think we will get married, but probably not anytime soon. I'd like to get the house sorted. I'd like to be in that house. Someone asked about my reaction to finding out. Um, I feel like lots of things have been different to what I sort of expected with pregnancy, including my reaction. I was just sort of like, oh wow, like, there's gonna be a baby. <laughs> I didn't do a lot of crying and I didn't feel very emotional in that way. I was just like, Phew, that's a big deal. Similarly, I haven't taken a lot of bump pictures. I thought I'd want to sort of take one every week and um, document its growth, but I haven't really felt like doing that, to be honest. I think in the first trimester as well, it's quite natural and normal to feel really anxious about everything being okay. Um, someone asked, have you had mood swings or emotional meltdowns that you otherwise wouldn't have? This is another thing for something I'm kind of surprised by. I get really bad PMS. It's pretty bad. It means that like two weeks out of a month, <laughs> I am a lot less useful than my sort of normal time. Um, I get really emotional. I get upset. I get angry. <laughs> um, it really takes a toll on my brain. And I really expected a lot of pregnancy to feel like that, but I've actually been I would say, apart from the occasional meltdown, pretty calm um, in the grand scheme of things. So <laughs> that was a big surprise to me considering how bad my PMS is and it was a pleasant surprise as well, I suppose. I am getting more emotional here at the end of pregnancy, I think because I'm just more tired and there are, my hormones probably are changing in preparation for labour and delivery and whatever. Yes. I'm just getting more tired and uncomfortable and I think that makes me emotional as well. But nothing out of the ordinary, I would say, for me. In fact, if anything, I have been more calm, which is good. Some of you asked about my birth plan and stuff. Probably won't um, share my birth preferences at this moment in time. Um, but my main one is to just go with the flow and come out of it with a baby and for us both to be safe. But I probably won't share my birth preferences just in case. <laughs> It does all change. Um, someone said, did you want to aim to be pregnant quite young or didn't really mind? I have always wanted to have my first baby in my 20s. I know lots of people sort of think that and then life changes and circumstances change and think things don't happen as you expect them to. And that is also totally typical, I think, these days. 
and normal um, but things have worked out so yes I have always wanted to be young-ish some people would call me young, some people wouldn't call me young. My mum had me in her early 20s and I think she enjoyed it and I'm hoping to enjoy it as well. What are you most um, and least looking forward to as a parent? Most, a couple of things really, um, which I know is cheating, but um, I think you reach this stage, particularly at the end of pregnancy. You know, you can feel them so strongly and they're getting much bigger. Um, and sometimes you just have a moment like, I feel, extremely close like I couldn't be closer to this little baby um, I know all of her little ways and we're sharing a body and it's so nice but in other ways she feels like a complete stranger um, I don't know what her face looks like I haven't heard her do you know what I mean it's kind of a it's a very weird thing um, and a weird feeling that comes across it comes across me sometimes I'm like wow I really haven't met this baby I mean we're sharing a body but I haven't really met the baby um, so I think you get to this stage and you just want to meet them, see their little face, see what they look like, um, put a name to a face. Really looking forward to meeting her <laughs> and um, getting to know her. I'm also really excited to see the world through her eyes, listen to songs for the first time with her, read my favourite books with her and she's seeing them all for the first time. You know how kids just get so excited about seeing, you know, a leaf that looks a particular way. <laughs> um, it's just seeing the world with fresh eyes. I think that's going to be really, really lovely. Least looking forward to probably sleeplessness. I love my sleep. I don't function as well without sleep. I think that's a common one. I'm really not looking forward to that aspect. It kind of comes along with the territory, doesn't it? And also, you know, she'll wake me up in the night. And sometimes it'll be for a feed or because her nappy needs changing, but sometimes it'll just be because she wants to be close to me and cuddle me. And that will probably all go, go away as she gets older. And then there'll be new things to be excited for, which will be lovely, but I'll miss all of that. So um, yes, whilst I'm not looking forward to no sleep, I think it's part and parcel of the experience. And um, you know, I'm gonna try and embrace all those early cuddles. Someone said, is it completely fucking whack having another person inside you? Yes, sometimes it is. <laughs> yes, basically. How is the baby doing? She, as far as we know, is happy, healthy, and bang on the 50th percentile every time I go for a scan. Um, so she is doing perfectly well in there, and I'm very pleased about that. Biggest surprise you didn't expect from being pregnant? I'm a little bit of a meticulous researcher, so basically as soon as I got pregnant, I found out all the symptoms of everything that could ever happen to me throughout my pregnancy. So really, by the time I was, you know, like four weeks pregnant, I feel like I knew quite a lot of things that could crop up. But I suppose even though I had read about them and whatever, um, the things that have surprised me the most are being congested all the time. Like being congested in my sinuses and stuff, pretty much my whole pregnancy has been really annoying. <laughs> yes, not something I would have expected pre-pregnancy at least. When weird things hurt, like your tailbone. Like, you know when you go out on a night out and you stumble around and then you sit down too hard on a bollard in the street or something, you wake up the next morning with a really painful bruised tailbone. That is how it feels sometimes, or how it did feel. I think it's moved out of the way now so it doesn't hurt quite so much, but yeah, weird pains like that. Oh, actually, something I'm really looking forward to with parenting is seeing Zach parent. I think that's gonna be really special. Someone asked, will I share my birth story? I don't know yet. If I feel like it would be useful, um, then I might do, but if I do, it would probably be in blog post form. I just think it's nicer to write about personal stuff sometimes rather than speak about it. It feels a bit less immediate and a bit less scary. <laughs> Lots of people asked how I told Zach and honestly I just carried the pregnancy test into him. <laughs> I didn't tell him in this very special way. <laughs> um, and then we both sat there sort of staring into the distance like, right my loves, there are, there are probably loads of questions that I haven't answered there, but I feel like I've rambled on for absolutely ages. So I'm gonna love you and leave you. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed this <laughs> and that it was useful and that it wasn't too boring. And I will see you all again very soon. Bye.